Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coronavirus Update 31. We are thrilled you are with us, and we have a special guest with us today, Erica Newkirk, our district nurse for Arcadia Unified School District. Erica, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Appreciate it. You and your team have done just a fantastic job through, throughout all of this. So first of all, thank you so much uh, for what you guys have done for our students, staff, families, and everybody here keeping us safe and healthy. I know it's a very difficult time right now. And you guys have once again, you and your team uh, gone above and beyond the call of duty and just created a COVID-19 preparedness checklist for families so I just wanted to have you on briefly to talk about this. I think it's a great resource. Was thrilled you guys were working on this. And as cases are going up right now um, in our area and all over the country in the state, we thought this would be a perfect time during Thanksgiving break for getting this information to our families and some really good reminders in this document. And it'll be linked in the description of this video and also on our coronavirus update webpage at ausd.net as always. Um, and you can find it on the top of our page there as well. So Erica, this is a really helpful document for people. We know the the normal stuff of wear your mask, social distancing, but this goes a little bit deeper and gives kind of a nice, really organized checklist for families to go through to, to prepare and anticipate a possible COVID exposure. Can you kind of just walk us through the kind of how this document and checklist works a little bit? Uh, sure, thank you. So um, a lot of the information that went into this document came from the CDC website, which also offers a similar checklist, but we wanted to make it a little bit more specific to our community and to LA County. So we wanted to make sure we were providing up-to-date information on case counts so that folks could get a feel for what's going on in our community. We also wanted to make sure that we linked to local information on testing resources and included information for families who might not have health insurance or who possibly haven't identified a primary care provider. Um, we worked in collaboration with some of the other nurses in the San Gabriel Valley. Um, and then our team uh, met several times as we were compiling the document just to make sure that we weren't leaving anything out. Yeah, it's really well done. And you talk about some issues and stuff such as health insurance that people you know, may not be sure about their status or if they don't have health insurance. And there's great links and resources all throughout this. And then there's a bullet point for you know some families with higher risk individuals uh, with underlying health conditions, or they may be a little bit older to worry about. Um, and then we go down, I guess, let's go just quickly over the everyday reminders that we've been hearing since day one, but there, there's some good ones in there, um, you know, starting with washing your hands and wearing the mask. I guess from your seat and your perspective as, you know, an expert in the field and watching this so closely and talking to all your colleagues, what are some of the things that are really the most effective that we can easily do to help you know, combat the spread of this? I think one of the biggest things is to have awareness of how you're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you have folks in your house who are not feeling so well, or perhaps have some mild symptoms of fever, just being cognizant of that, um, the county is still trying to encourage folks to stay home as much as possible. And that um, becomes even more important when we might have people who are starting to show early signs of symptoms. Um, but even if you're feeling well, if you're going to be out and about in community, uh, in the community, we know that there's the recommendation to always be wearing a face covering unless you meet certain criteria that have been outlined by the county. Um, keeping your physical distance from other people at least six feet of distance as much as is feasible. Um, and also part of that is trying to avoid being in enclosed spaces with other individuals, particularly if you will be in close contact within that enclosed space. And then, um, as you mentioned, washing your hands and make sure you're washing your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water or using uh, an approved hand sanitizer. And if you are in a situation where you're perhaps not wearing a mask or a face covering and you do have to sneeze or cough, um, to cover your cough with either your hand or your sleeve, and then make sure you practice hand hygiene after that. One of the constants in this <clears throat> whole COVID thing since March, even January, our first update was sent out at the end of January, is change. And so the beginning of this, I remember in March, it was don't go to the emergency room if you're feeling sick. We don't want to inundate our hospitals and uh, all that sort of stuff was keeping it at, at a limit. But so now going back to like what we should do if we think us or someone in our family 
has COVID, what are some of the first steps they should do? Who do you call? Where do you go? Testing. Uh, can you walk us through that process, kind of the first steps you should do when you think someone may be exposed? Sure. So just like any other medical situation, our first recommendation is always going to be contact you or your child's primary care provider because they're the person who's going to be the most familiar with you and your individual health needs. So for any health concern, that's going to be our first recommendation. We know now, though, that we're in a situation where folks might have to wait a certain amount of time before they can see their primary care providers. And if you're concerned that you or your child might have symptoms of coronavirus, we would recommend looking into the other testing opportunities that are available, either testing centers or pharmacies. Um, we don't want people to hesitate to get care if they feel like they need that. And that also goes for other routine health needs. Um, you know, the state and the county, and even on a larger level, um, we're are really strongly recommending that if folks are ill, or even if folks need to get routine health care, physical exams, immunizations, that they are they're not afraid to reach out to their primary care providers to see how to obtain those resources. Any advice for people that have a family member that has tested positive? They have to self isolate but they're in the same household. It seems like a difficult situation not to spread it. Any tips people can do to help the spread in the same household? Sure, and it is important to, to mention that in some cases this won't be possible. And I think we, we recognize that, but if it is at all possible or feasible, the county does recommend trying to keep distance from that individual as much as possible. So avoiding that close contact, which is defined as being within six feet for 15 minutes or more, um, trying to avoid having that person who is sick preparing food for other people. Um, if it's possible to have that person remain in one room with access to their own bathroom, that would be preferable. Obviously, that's not going to be possible for a lot of folks. So if we do have shared use spaces, just trying to do our best to you know, wipe clean and disinfect those shared use spaces as much as possible. And for our families and our students with school, we're in distance learning, so that step is a little bit easier for us. But what should a parent do if their child is, they think they have COVID and they wanna let us know, they may not be in class, that sort of thing. What are, what are those steps for parents of our, our students? So the protocol will be much the same as it was in the past. We would advise you to reach out to your school's attendance office or the, the main office that you would normally call or email if this has happened in pre-COVID times. Um, in some cases, our uh, health office assistants, the nurses who work at the school sites, have been doing some outreach for folks. So if you have any questions about how to access services, if you don't feel like you understand the quarantine guidelines, um, definitely let us know and our nurses would be happy to talk you through that. Thank you so much, Erica. Great job to you and your team again. We appreciate all the support, what you guys are doing. It's Thanksgiving week. You guys, I know you're still working, so we really appreciate it. And this checklist is, I think it's really valuable at a time where we're seeing these spikes in cases with COVID-19. And uh, so we just wanted to review that for people, go over it, we'll link to the document. There really is some great resources and reminders for people and some new information I think we'll get a lot of value out of. So Erica Newkirk, our district nurse in Arcadia Unified, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate your time today. Thank you, Ryan.